The MCAT likes to test your understanding and analysis of graphical data. And the most common one that you'll encounter in physics is seeing one of these three quantities, position, velocity, or acceleration, plotted versus time. One thing that's nice about this chart is it simplifies your understanding of that. Because as you move to the right, you're looking at change over time, which is a derivative. And if you move to the left, that means that you're looking at an integral. What that means is that if you see any of these quantities plotted versus time, the slope of that curve will tell you the change in the term to its right. So if you're looking at, say, a velocity versus time plot, the slope of that will tell you the acceleration, because that's the term to its right. And the area under the curve will tell you the total change in the term to its left. So it will tell you the change in position between, let's say, time 1 and 2. So the area under the velocity versus time graph will tell you the change in position over that time, or the displacement that is, uh, has been experienced by the object. If you're looking at position versus time, the slope will tell you the instantaneous velocity. And if you're looking at acceleration versus time, the area between that and your x-axis will tell you the change in velocity over time. So with any of these things, if there's a term to the right of it, the slope of that curve versus time will tell you that term to its right. So the slope of position versus time will tell you velocity. The slope of velocity versus time will tell you acceleration. Slope of acceleration tells you something, but it's beyond the scope of the MCAT. And the area underneath that curve will tell you about the term to its left. So the area under the acceleration versus time plot will tell you the change in velocity during that time span. And the area under the velocity versus time slope will tell you the change in position or the displacement during that time. And so this makes it a lot simpler to understand some of the core types of graphs that are tested on the MCAT. One last note about graphs, just to clear up some potential points of confusion. It involves this velocity versus time graph. The first thing to realize is that whenever velocity is positive, when it's above zero, that means the object is moving forward. So yes, the slope is negative, and that means that the object is decelerating. But that is an object that is still moving forward, but just not as quickly. When it reaches velocity of zero, that is when it comes to a stop. And then when its velocity becomes negative, that's when it starts moving backwards. Here at this point, when it starts to slope upwards, the object is still moving backwards because the velocity is still negative. But it is beginning its movement, its acceleration toward forward motion again, which it finally reaches as its velocity becomes greater than zero. So you can sort of imagine the movement of the particle in this case. It's moving forward, and then it comes to a complete stop at this point when its velocity crosses zero. Then it moves backwards for a while, and then around here it starts to sort of slow down and start to accelerate forward, but it doesn't start moving forward again until it gets that forward positive velocity once again. So be aware that just looking at the slope doesn't tell you about how the object is moving. So be very clear that when you're looking at velocity, what you're looking at is velocity and not acceleration or position. So a downward slope in the velocity curve tells you about acceleration. But the bottom line is, as long as velocity is positive, the object is moving forward. And as long as velocity is negative, the object is moving backwards. The other thing to be aware of is that graphs like this can help underscore the distinction between displacement and distance. Remember that the area under the velocity versus time curve gives us an indication of what is the change in position over time. Remember that distance just cares about how far it travels, and so the path is very relevant. And if you were trying to figure out the distance, you would add the areas of all three of these parts. So that would add the forward movement, the backwards movement, and then the forward movement once again. That's an indicator of distance. If the question is displacement, you have these two positive movement periods, and you would have to subtract the area between this negative part and zero in order to figure out displacement. So the distance is going to be all three of these added together. That's the distance traveled along the entire path. 
Whereas the displacement is these two positive components with the reverse component or the negative component subtracted from it. And so you'll notice that here the displacement is going to be smaller than the total distance traveled. So be aware of distance and displacement with, with graphs like this and realize that distance, all it cares about is the area of these chunks. So distance only cares about the total area between your curve and zero. Whereas displacement cares about the positive area between your curve and zero. And so that means you take these two positive components and subtract from that the negative piece there.